Hi everyone, my name is Angela Boldini, I'm a cognitive scientist and in this video I'll keep talking about working memory and we'll also have a look at what executive functions are. Okay. As we have already mentioned, working memory capacity is limited. By the way, chess playing is an excellent training to keep our working memory fit. As we have seen in our previous video, any working memory task implies the activation of information in our long-term memory implies keeping and updating information in our short-term memory and also impl implies data elaboration to produce an output. This process is a very expensive process at cognitive level. That's why I like to represent working memory as a sort of battery because it really is like our cognitive battery fully charged, hopefully, when we wake up in the morning, but that slowly get into the right zone as the day goes by, especially when we have to face demanding tasks. These are two of the most popular models of working memory, Badley's model and Cowan's model. I won't go into details because this would really go beyond the purpose of this video, but I just like to point out the fact that in both these models we have a central executive that activates information in our long-term memory. This uh, central executive is the energy consuming component in working memory. Similarly to the executive attention network that we saw already in the Postman's model of attention, the two structures are actually completely overlapping. The central executive is the center where decisions and choices are made, where data elaboration takes place, where we change, for example, for example from the autopilot mode to the control mode. What do I mean with that? Okay, as you can see here, these data, um, which are from Tracy Holloway, one of the main researchers on working memory. As you can see here, I was saying working memory is at its best at around 25, 30 years of age. So as university teachers, you are dealing with people, your students, that are at the top of their working memory potential performance. But of course, potential performance and actual performance can be very different, as you know. Putting it in alpha words, a good working memory is simply one that can keep in mind sufficient items and their relations to one another to solve the problem at hand, which may require a sufficient combination of capacity, speed, knowledge and, availab and available strategies. So as you can see, potential is not everything. Working memory performance is the result of a combination of multiple variables. The factor I would like to stress here is capacity, because that takes us to the concept of cognitive load. Cognitive load and working memory performance are strictly related, obviously. As you can imagine from what we have been saying so far, we can have good working memory performance only if we don't get into a cognitive overload. That's also the posture that uh, Cohen takes in this paper he wrote back in 2014. He says that some researchers emphasize the possibility of training working memory to improve learning and education. In this chapter, I take the complementary view that we must learn how to adjust the material to facilitate learning and education with the working memory abilities that the learner has. Cohen here is, is talking about learning and education, and of course he focuses in this paper in particular on education and teaching up to high school. But the very same principle applies to any learning activity or any activity in general. 
starting from the overloaded brain that too often each of us has in his or her daily job. And of course, the basic secrets to manage cognitive overload are time and activities management. The most demanding tasks must be tackled first when our battery is full, is fully charged. Careful selection of what we choose to deal with at any one time and inhibition, just to use cognitive terms, of as many distractions as possible. Rest. We need to give our brain a break before we get into cognitive overload. Sleeping well is essential to fully recharge our cognitive batteries. And a short nap, when needed and when possible, during the day can do wonders to our brain. In this very recent paper, the authors look at the neurometabolic dynamics behind cognitive fatigue and they found, once again, that hard cognitive work reduces control over decision-making, favoring low-effort action and short-term reward. But we all have experienced this, right? As I mentioned earlier, we all know that when we are mentally tired, we don't speak a second language or a third language as well as we do when we are mentally fresh. We also know that when we are tired or exhausted after a day at work, we can make mental calculation, for example, as well as we do when we are not tired. Of course, our cognitive battery batteries in those cases are running out. Executive functions. What are they and why am I mentioning them here? Well, executive functions are higher order cognitive abilities. So they are cognitive abilities that require the combination of other more basic cognitive functions like memory and attention, for example, or language. Executive functions are, for example, cognitive flexibility, working memory, and that's why I wanted to mention executive functions here, inhibitory control. This is just an example of inhibitory control task. It's the famous Stroop task, I'm sure many of you would know it. Task where all you have to do is to name the color in which these words are printed and inhibit the automatic reading of the words. So the answer here would be yellow, green, purple, and red. Why do we need cognitive functions and when do we use them? We use and need cognitive functions, for example, to switch from autopilot mode to control mode. Just imagine, for example, this scene. You are driving very relaxed and along your path from home to work. You are listening to music. It's a path where you could almost drive with your eyes closed. When suddenly you find a road works or a car accident in front of you and you can keep driving your usual way, what do you need to do? you need to, to find an alternative path, an alternative way to get to work. That's when you switch from autopilot mode to control mode. And that's just an example, of course, but that's when your working memory has to activate and find a solution. We use and need also executive functions, for example, for problem solving. We use and need executive functions for planning and prioritizing and these are one of the most energy consuming activity, activities from a cognitive point of view. So first thing in the morning, planning and prioritizing. We use and need executive functions for reasoning. We use and need executive functions for monitoring and metacognitive activities. We are not born with fully developed executive functions. As I said in our previous video, I think about working memory, we reach our top potential at around 25, 30 years of age. But don't worry too much. We then compensate with experience. Okay, so we talk about working memory here and executive functions. 
As usual, now I invite you to make a brief mental recap of everything we said so that you can start consolidating all the new information that your brain just registered. Take some notes and only once you have finished doing this, replay this video if you need to. Okay, that's all from me now and I see you again in the next video.